In today's episode, we're going to be talking about reading. I know, but it won't be boring. So enjoy. Welcome to the Age of Jeremy podcast. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. I am your host. If this is your first time tuning into this podcast, this is a podcast about all of the interesting stuff that goes on in my life. And man, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm the CFO of 3T Warrior Academy. 3T Warrior Academy is a company that I own with my best friend, CJV, Coach JV. And we take people through our 120-day challenge. We teach them about our five wealth pillars. Um, we teach them about how to break free of the just over broke system. And we just added an insurance component to our program. So if you are interested in any of that, Head on over to 3TWarriorAcademy.com or 3TWarrior.com. Get in seven-day free trial to see all the cool stuff that we have in there. I also teach business courses every other Wednesday, and I go through a cool business book reading group, which is interesting because we were talking about business. I'm mean, all about business. We're talking about books today and reading. And I tell you, reading isn't boring, which you will find out soon enough that it is not I guess it kind of can be a little bit boring, but we're going to talk about how you can become a voracious, 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 I guess voracious too, a voracious reader, rawr, a voracious reader. But before we do that, I'm also the CEO of a company called Age of Radio, very dear and near to my heart. Make sure that you follow Age of Radio on Twitter at Age of Radioverse and on Instagram at Age of Radioverse. I'm sorry, that's on Instagram at Age of Radioverse, on Twitter at Age of Radio. You can hear podcast clips from all of our podcasts. We have over 100 of them. If you're interested in joining our podcast network, reach out to me. My email is, one of my emails is in the episode description, so you can definitely find out how to join our network and we have started talking more about indie game development or indie games um we are trying to become a, a one-stop shop for news as it relates to independent creators to give them more of a voice and then we'll be offering other products and services um, as we grow um, but that growing is going to happen as i get more of these other businesses off my plate we also have merlin launching head on over to twitter i get merlin crypto you can check out our Twitter spaces that we do for Merlin. I am the moderator for those. There's just so much going on. So if you want to stay in the know, make sure that you subscribe to this podcast right here. So without further ado, actually, before we do that, make sure that you follow me on all the social media platforms. You can just type in Age of Jeremy and you should be able to find me to some extent. And if you want to join our my community of podcasts or people addicted to podcasting and addicted to anything geek dumb related, head on over to Facebook and jump into our Facebook podcast group. I know there's so much stuff going on. That's why it's so important that you make sure that you follow me so that you know all of the cool stuff that's happening so you can be a part of it. Some of it's free, some of it costs, but um, this is always free, so you can always listen to this bad boy. So let's talk about reading. So if you don't know, I'm obsessed with libraries. I like the history of libraries. I like the library sciences. I like just information and archiving and the things that we have collected throughout the ages and the way that we can archive things so future generations can learn about those things. And libraries have just become so fascinating to me. I was supposed to be in Virginia these last couple of weeks, so I have done some staycationing with my mother. But in the last couple of days and the mornings, I've been hanging out with libraries here in Glendale, Arizona. We have um, our downtown library, which is gorgeous. We have our main campus library, which I have a fun story about that in one second. We have our Foothills location, which is actually pretty close to my house. It's within, I don't know, five or 10 minutes or so. And that one is also 
Very, very gorgeous. The Glendale Main Juan campus, which is right next to Glendale Community College. That one is just gorgeous. And what's super, super exciting about it is there are peacocks there. So the couple of days this week to get back into my habit of reading and to get away from all the distractions because I can zone in when I don't have any distractions away. So I've been taking the book that I'm trying to read from my next book review on my YouTube channel. It's called The Village of Eight Graves. I'll talk about it in one second, but I went to Foothills one day and read for about 30, 40 minutes before I was supposed to meet with my tree guy. Then I went over to um, the Glendale main campus and uh, main library and, uh, and sat for an hour and a half the other day. Um, and I got through some pretty good, some good reading. I like, I like doing the Pomodoro method with my reading too. I'm practicing, trying that out where you do 25 hardcore, five minutes off, 25 hardcore, five minutes off, 25 hardcore, five minutes off over a period of two hours. Then you take a longer break. Um, and then one day I'll probably try to do an eight hour reading session doing that. Um, just because reading's not super intensive if you're not, you know, you know, having to learn something with it. And so one of my main goals is to get through all the books that I read, but before I go into that, so at the Glendale main library, they have, but there's homeless people, you know, that feed the pigeons and there's a bunch of pigeons out front, but they also, it's next to this uh, famous farm that was in Glendale. Um, and so there's a bunch of peacocks there. So there were like five peacocks just chilling by the door on one of the entrances. And then on the other entrances, there was one, and there was another one hanging out with the pigeons. And if you don't know, I love birds and, um, love, um, ornithology and reading about ornithology. Not that I would ever go in to that specifically with that field, but I love reading about biology and getting to know more about um, animals and so forth and so forth. And so it was just really cool to see the pigeons and it was a really good time. And um, it was very fun to sit and read and quiet. And so when I was reading uh, this book, I thought about where I was at in my reading list for the year and it got messed. I, I got kind of, it got messed up a little bit um, because I started doing the business book club in the 3T Warrior Academy. Again, go and get a seven day free trial. There's a link in my bio or there's a link in Coach JV's bio. There's a link somewhere. You, you'll be able to figure it out. And so, so I got distracted by that. And then they, the company Pushkin Vertigo, which releases my Japanese mystery novels that I like reading uh, from Saishi Yokomizo about um, uh, Kasuki Kandaichi, they um, released uh, the sec actual second one of the books that he released. So it went the Honjin Murders, and then it went um, um, the Curse of Gokuman Island, and then it's the Village of Eight Graves, and then they're putting another one out, and then it's the Unu inugami curse or the inugami curse is somewhere in there and so as they release these i've been adding them into my book list so that's been pushing my book list out a little bit um and then um i uh started doing the book club in three two war academy and so we went through uh ray dalio's principles and so that shouldn't actually take that much time but i was not i got we had so much stuff going on that my rhythm got a little messed up because of our conference, getting Merlin going, um, uh, mainly just the conference and getting Merlin going and then some situations with one of our other companies. And then I've added on the insurance. The insurance isn't really that big of a, that the test, the testing for the insurance I've been spending more time on. Um, but it was mainly just the fact that we had so much stuff going on. And now that I have become more efficient in a lot of stuff, I have more time to do a bunch of stuff and we are really focused on doing those things. And so, uh, Oh, uh, that was the other one. Our, um, uh, generational shifter started. And so I teach that, uh, four hours a week, essentially, or eh, nah, it's about two and a half hours a week. And then I do one-on-ones with everybody that's in the groups that are active. And then that was taking up time. And so now that we got that kind of going and we've got much better at our processes and efficiencies, I was like, okay, I've got to really start making time for the things that, you know, some of these other things that I really want to push forward and, and I really enjoy doing. And one of those things is educating people, teaching people about books, um, uh, learning and development type of stuff. Um, and I, I created an investment thesis, which I'm not going to go. It's well, it's kind of an investment thesis. It's more of a principle because we're going through um, principles, the guided journal by Ray Dalio now in the book group. So I'm spending more time thinking about like my non-negotiables. And so when I think about that, reading is one of my non-negotiables and sharing those books with the world is one of my non-negotiables, mainly because I like reading things that are not necessarily the most 
they're more obscure things. Um, they're more uh, academic related, not saying that that's better or worse than anything. But sometimes when I'm trying to find these things out in the world, there's nothing. And it takes me a long time to research these things. So I kind of want to do a lot of that stuff with my YouTube channel as it grows. And so so if you're not part of my YouTube channel, head on over to Age of Jeremy YouTube and sign up. But anyway, so someone on my one of my TikToks said that I need to get to the points faster, and he was probably right. So that being said, when I was at the library, I was thinking about the books that I haven't read. So I, I just kind of wanted to recap what I'm doing for um, – the list of books that I'm reading. So Middle March was the first one by George Eliot. There is a review of that on my YouTube channel. Um, then there was The Honjin Murders. I actually read The Honjin Murder Murders first. That is actually a review on my YouTube channel as well. And then it was supposed to go The Inugami Curse by Saishi Yoko Mizo, The Village of Eight Graves by Saishi Yoko Mizo, which is what I'm actually reading right now. Um, Poke by Walter R. Borneman, uh, which is, Poke was actually one of the only presidents in history. Um, he's also a Democrat and I'm you know, very liberal and progressive. Um, he might've been more of a conservative Democrat, but I don't really know a lot about him. That's why I'm going to read the biography. And so he was actually one of the only presidents that chose to do a one term and he got all the things that he wanted to accomplish in that, um, one term. And so I'm really interested to read that. And the only book that I found that was, that was supposed to be a good biography of his was Poke by Walter R. Borneman. And then I really want to do Budenbrooks by Thomas Mann, Killing Commendator, Commendator, Commendator by Commendat, I think that's how you pronounce it, by Haruku Murakami, and then The Path to Power by Robert A. Caro, and then I was just going to knock out all of Robert A. Caro's books. And so when I started looking at this, I was like, well, fuck, I made this list back in July 7th of 2022. It's been a year, so obviously I don't spend as much time reading as I would like to, again, because there's so much stuff that's going on. And so I'm trying to get into a rhythm um, that I think that I can get into now, and I'm going to utilize the libraries as a part of that to set time aside to go and read for longer periods of time where there's less distractions, where that is dedicated time. So I was thinking, like, what are the things that make someone a really, really voracious reader? Because I read more than most people, but less than some of those really hardcore readers. And I would really like to hone that skill, be better at it, be, uh, remember the stuff that I read a lot more. And I think that that could benefit all of you as well, especially, um, the more that you read, the more knowledge that you're going to have, the better, um, better culturally you're going to be to have conversations with people, the more you're going to have a broad understanding of the world around you. And that is one of the main benefits of reading along with all of the cool stuff that we learn along the way. So the first thing that I thought of, well, the first thing that makes someone a really, really good voracious reader is that they set time aside to read on a regular basis. I think Bill Gates is kind of known for his reading. I would love to be known how Bill Gates is known for his reading. I know Mark Cuban reads a lot. And so when we think about how they read, they always have time set aside for reading. So that's the number one thing. So the more time that you set aside for reading, the more you're probably going to actually sit down and read. So that was the first one that I thought of. And then I did some internet scrolling to see what other people thought. And I came up with some, I, I liked some of the ones that I found. So I came up with some of the lists of my own. So the one, first one is make time to do the reading. The second one is you have to make a list. And you have to keep to that list. The, the more likely that you are to write something down, the more likely you are to accomplish it. Okay. And so I have, I love Microsoft. I have OneNote. I, I'm integrating their, their to do and their lists, um, Microsoft list. That's more of a business product because it connects the lists into groupings that you can attach to SharePoint sites. So that's neither here nor there, but, um, so in 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 my um uh OneNote, you can actually put a little book icon that says book to read and you can make a list of books. So I started to do that. Um so I have all of those books that I want to read and then I'm going to keep going on this list of how I want to read them. So when you have that list, not only does it help when you write something down, you kind of have a plan in place to say, "Hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this." Now, 
mine's going to change because I love these murder mystery books that Pushkin Vertigo is putting out by um, Saishi Yokomizo. There's another one that's coming out here in July. So I'm going to finish The Village of Eight Grays. I'm going to go back to the Unyugami Curse, and then I'm going to go to the new one, and I can't remember the name of it, but if I remember correctly, it had a really cool name, and I'm really excited about it. And they do such a great job on the printing of the books. So, uh, and by that, I mean the, like, the look of the book, the feel of the book, how the book handles. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, when you get into reading books, you will take a lot of that stuff into consideration. Um, and so, uh, and so, so once I'm done with that, then I'll do poke boot and docs, killing commendator, and then tackle Robert Caro's path of power, Lyndon B. Johnson series. And then he has a really famous book. Can't remember what the fuck it's called. Excuse my language, but it's about an architect, and it was the first one. Um, and supposedly Robert Caro is supposed to make some more of these, but I think he's really he's getting up there in years. So I don't know if there's going to be more to this Lyndon B. Johnson biography. I mean, the man's written four books, all of them won Nobel prizes, I think, or all of them have been up for Nobel prizes. And one of them, um, maybe hasn't gotten it, but, um, path to power. I'm a, I'm kind of into already cause I started reading it before. So I'll just pick that bad boy up. Okay. So back to the, the what makes a voracious, ferocious reader, rawr, a voracious reader. Okay. So, um, it's going to be setting time to read throughout the week. Okay. can be whatever time second to make a list. You got to make a list. You got to follow that list and you got to do it. And then this is the one that I think gets most people is you have to do it book by book is because if now I'm going to have my book business book club book. So I'm going to be doing two books, but I have made the, I have made the, Oh, that was the other reason why it kind of got separated is because I put attention span on there. So I think what I'm going to have to do is also relook at the book after I get through these bad boys and add any other nonfiction books that I want. Cause I think if you're focused on the one book, you're likely to get through them more. You're likely to get through them quicker. So you'll also lose track of stuff and you might not feel as motivated to read a lot of the books. Now, some people might disagree with me on that. I am saying that for me, at least that is going to be a really, really big problem solver for me. So I'm just going to go hard on this book because technically, and you couldn't see what I did, but I picked up the book, but like the village of eight grades, it should only take me about a couple days to read. If I put 30 minutes into a day, it's not that big of a book. So this book should have been done in a week. And so, so that's one of the biggest things. So putting a time slot to it, read during that period of time, if you want to read further, then do it. If not, at least know that you read that time and then do a book by book. Don't do it until this book is done. And that's what helps keep you focused. The other thing that I'm a big adamant for, I've tried to do it during the village of the eight graves is take notes during of the book or have a book diary or a journal, um, a journal for your book reading. Um, so you can take notes about your favorite parts. It's going to help you engage in the text. You'll get more meaning out of it. You'll remember things much better. And I think that that's one of the things that can make reading so much more valuable to people is if they take notes and they dive deeper into it, um, than they otherwise would. And one way to do is that is to take notes. Um, one of the ones that I read that I, I'm not a huge fan. I, I would like to read faster. So try to read fast. I'm not going to put this as one of my rules to be a voracious reader, but I think it can help if you can get better in your speed reading faster. I like reading slowly because I like, I like being just engulfed in the book and that's me. And I'm not a really fast reader to begin with, but I think that speed reading can help, especially if you want to get a bunch of books. And I think as you read more, you'll be faster. Um, again, it's going to slow down depending on the content the book's harder to understand like this, uh, the village of eight graves. I can breeze through no offense to Ray Dalio principles was a super easy read. You know, that one I could breeze through, but when like middle March, when I was reading that, Oh my God, it was like a minute and a half to two minutes, two and a half minutes of page. So much happening on the page, so much to try to remember. And so, you know, so you will hit faster as you read more. Okay. Um, and then the other thing too is this is something that um uh uh Charlie Munger uh Warren Buffett's partner I think he said is always have a book with you because whenever there is a moment where you think that you're bored most of us will jump on our phone we'll go through social media we'll chit chat we'll do waste of time shit okay and 
when you have a book with you, you are less likely to do that. So that means that you have to either have a tote bag with you, a backpack. Backpacks are getting really popular, like super popular with like everybody, um, uh, even women as opposed to their purses from what I read um, But uh, and seen. And so if you keep the book with you at all times, then you are going to probably read it if you have it with you. And so that's the other one. So make sure that you have that book with you at all times. So real quick to recap, one, make sure that you plan the time to read. Two, make a list. Okay. Three, take notes. Oh, sorry. Three, do one book at a time. Four, take notes. Learn to read faster if you want. I'm not going to put that as five. My five is going to, to take a book with you at all times so you always have something to read in place of what you were doing. Um, the other thing that you can do, and this isn't my sixth one, is you could do more listening to books. Um, I, I've read that your brain activates the same whether you listen or you read the book. I enjoy the act and art of reading. I tend to retain it more because I'm more, I'm more, I'm being more um, uh, focused on the content that I'm reading. Other people, they can listen and they learn that way. So again, and it also depends on what you're, you're listening slash reading to. So that's something that you can do. Um, uh, and I think that those are the ones. So let's go ahead and recap those bad boys. So one. Um, so the actual five are make sure that you set time for it. That's the number one thing that you should do is set time at the beginning of the week to what you're going to read Two, make a list. Okay. Of the books, keep that list going, organize that list, reorganize that list, make that list your bitch Two, read one book at a time Four, take notes, five, take a book with you wherever you go so that you can always be reading it. And two added ones that I would say that might help is learn to read faster. You'll automatically get faster as you read. Um, learn to speed read if that's something that you're interested in. And then listen to the books um, because you can be doing that more frequently than reading them. Because if you're reading while you're driving, you might actually get hurt. So those are my five tips for becoming a voracious or ferocious reader. I hope that you benefited from them. Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind, and we'll talk with you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. My name is, again, Jeremy Quintanilla. I love Neumann microphones. I love the Zoom L8. I record on Steinberg's Cubase, and I use a little bit of some Waves plugins on those bad boys. Um, the beginning song is Brave Faces Everyone by Spanish Love Songs. Also, go make sure that you check out their um, new singles that are out. Just type in Spanish Love Songs. You will find them. The closing song is Threatening Each Other Recapitalism by Illuminati Hotties. What a great name for a band. So make sure that you check them out. Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. And we will talk with you next time. Bye.